Hey there, hi there, ho there. I have gotten a lot of questions about what do you bring to go moto camping? Let's find out. So the first thing that I think is important about moto camping is taking care of yourself. So that to me means eating food. Now, a lot of people say, oh, the first thing you need is shelter. Yeah, but you're on a motorcycle, so, you know, first thing I'm concerned about is eating. So I'm gonna start with the food. Oh, what am I sitting on? Ha ha. Well, I am sitting on my camp chair and it is, hold on. It is a climate camp chair and I would highly recommend getting one that you can lean back and relax in not just a little stool but a chair with a back because after a long day of riding you are really going to appreciate having something nice to sit on normally when i assemble this i put this on the front legs so i've got a little pocket here so that's a little trick i learned from somebody you just take the little loops on either side and attach them to the legs when you assemble the chair but if I did that, I couldn't show this to you. So there you go, the climate chair. All right, going back to food. You wanna set up a kitchen to go. What are the essentials for a kitchen? Well, first of all, you gotta have something to cook with. And that brings me to this little gizmo. This is my all-in-one kitchen setup, my stove. So the first thing that you need is a cup to put everything in and you want to make sure your cup is large enough it's nice to have a lid a lid is really handy because things boil faster and you keep dirt from falling into things you're cooking with the lid so get a cup with a lid then next thing is the actual stove bit and you can get all kinds you can get a jet boil which has a screw on cup i prefer to get a universal stove and I think this one was $30 and it has worked beautifully. The little wings come out and it's got the little on off right here. And it's got a piezo, if you can hear that clicking to ignite the fuel. What about the fuel? Well, the little stove comes with a stand for the fuel. Handy dandy little stand for the fuel. My fuel fits into the cup, which is really handy dandy. Now you'll notice this has two sets of grooves, two sets of grooves. This is the small fuel canister and that snaps in beautifully into the first set of grooves and it fits into my cup. However, the larger fuel canister will not fit in my cup. So decide beforehand, before you order your cup or pot or whatever that you're gonna assemble your stove into are you gonna use the bigger, meaning this one is, trying to remember what size. Okay, so this is the taller one, and I don't see the volume. Anyway, there's one that's taller, and then there's the mini. So you get an idea of the two different sizes, right? And the two different diameters. So you can get a small one that'll fit inside this cup, or you can get a bigger one, you need a bigger cup. You can get even larger fuel cells, that's no problem. But once it's on here, this little puppy just screws right on and voila, you have your little camp stove. So it's super easy to use, super quick to assemble, super tiny when you disassemble it. Where'd I put my little bag? Drops right down into the little bag. And then once it's disassembled, you just drop your fuel cell in there. drop the stove in there, fold in. Oh, and that's something that I really like, the little silicon grippies on the handle, so the handle doesn't get hot. And there's also a little silicon loop on the lid to my pot, to my cup, so that doesn't get hot. So that's really handy dandy. And then the base for the fuel cell just fits in the bottom of the bag from my cup. So that's real compact and easy to carry but this one i really would have preferred to get the bigger cup um, get the measurements get one of these big fuel cells first if you want the big fuel cell and measure it 
so that you get the right diameter cup to go with it so that you'll have a self-contained set with your stove. So that's the first thing. Second thing, first thing in the morning, what do you want? Coffee. Some people like to get just the bags of coffee because they compress and get smaller as you go. I prefer the hard can. Um, it's more airtight. It keeps my coffee better. So um, I don't always get Ely coffee. I get whatever coffee and put it in my Ely container. Just any kind of hard canister for your coffee is what I recommend. Again, some people prefer the bag because it rolls up. I would not use gallon Ziploc bags or Ziploc bags because they get holes in them too easily. Then how do you make your coffee? Well, I would highly recommend the website Moto Camp Nerd because they have all this stuff like the coffee maker. It's a pour over coffee filter. I also carry paper filters to put into it just for easier cleanup. But if I'm camping in the wild and I'm not carrying out my trash with me, well, to minimize the trash I'm carrying out with me, then I won't use the paper filters. I just dump the coffee grinds in the forest. But for ease of cleanup, I use the filters whenever there's trash cans available. Okay. Now, once you've made your coffee, it needs to go into something to make it. And I recommend the cup with the fins on it. I also have a regular cup that does not have the fins on it. And when you put hot contents into it, your hands are gonna get hot. The one with the fins is worth the extra money because it won't get your hands hot. And it fits perfectly with the pour over coffee cone, okay? Put that away. This one's harder to put away. Sometimes it's not happy getting put away. For some reason it just, there we go. Ta-da. Okay, so I've got my coffee cup, I got my cone. That goes in there. Okay, water. You're gonna want something to carry water. I've got this collapsible cup, um, bottle. You open it up, it pops open. So if you have access to potable water, you have a container to carry it in and then it just folds right up. There we go, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Packs down real small, that's handy. Another thing that you could use is the mini filters. I use a Sawyer mini water filter on my backpack, on my hydration pack, and this comes with the Sawyer mini. You can fill this up with water and use it to squeeze clean water out. If you don't have access to potable water, you can filter water. So I keep this with me too. Oh, if you're wondering what that syringe was for, that's for backwashing the filter. You can find out more about the Sawyer mini filter um, on Sawyer's website. Then you need something to eat off of. I found these this set of three, um, again, Moto Camp Nerd is where I got these. They fold up. This is the neatest thing. This is a bowl. Here's your bowl. It also has measuring marks on it, both in um, cups and milliliters, which is really cool. So there's your bowl. You can use this either as a plate or you can button up the sides on this one and you have a plate with some shallow sides. So it doesn't shrink the plate much and it gives it a little more structure so that you can carry your food more securely. And then there's also a cup. And this also has the measuring lines on the side, which is handy dandy. So you've got a cup, a bowl, and a plate, a set of three that you can get. They're from Fozzils, F-O-Z-Z-I-L-S, if you wanna look them up and maybe buy them somewhere else. Fossils. Um, I don't know if anybody else makes these, but then you're going to want implements. I like reusable implements. I like this set. It was handy dandy. It comes with a straw cleaner and chopsticks and a straw. Actually, two straws, a straight straw and a bent straw. Um, fork, knife, spoon, and chopsticks. And this was a gift from a friend, so I don't know where she got it. But you do need some kind of implements to eat with. Going back to preparing the food, I got this little cook set, my little travel kitchen. It's got a cutting board. They're measuring marks inside the spoon, the cooking spoon. It came with a little bottle for dish liquid. 
It folds up real nice. Salt and pepper shaker, and it fits right in the handle of the spatula, and that folds up real nice. And of course, you can't wash your dishes without a dish cloth. So there's a handy dandy dish cloth. And it's got a little hook to hang it by to dry. Okay, so that's it for my little travel kitchen. Now, I don't like bland food. I don't know about you, but I really don't like bland food. So I also bring some seasonings with me. Um, and if you're wondering why I have two cups, one is for hot, for coffee, and this is just for water or lemonade or whatever other kind of cool drink. And it also has more measuring lines. So I use this mostly as a measuring cup more than anything else. And it folds flat, handy dandy. I strongly recommend you bring some kind of cooking oil. I use olive oil and be careful that the lid that you have is really, really secure. Some that just screw on and don't flip top aren't that secure. This one's a flip top and it also screws on really, really securely. And then this is my spice shelf. And I've got some seasonings in it. I've got some craisins. I've got some almonds. I like to cook with caraway seed a lot, boil potatoes and uh, make salads and stuff with caraway seed. I've got my garlic powder and I've got dill. Those are my primary seasonings um, in addition to that salt and pepper. Now, what the heck is this? Well, you can't have input without output. So if you're not somewhere that you can dig to dispose of your number two, you might wanna bring some little poop bags. And this is, yes, a roll of doggy poop bags. So I always carry those just in case I'm somewhere that I can't dig um, to dispose of my number two. So that's it for food and cooking and kitchen. Moving right along, going back to can't have input without output. I've got two different kinds of shovel here. I've got a real cheapy little aluminum one, real light, doesn't take up any space, fits in any little nook or cranny, and it's very handy, um, very sturdy, not very flexible, and you see that it's a little bit serrated at the bottom, so it really digs nicely. So I've got that. Or I've also got this trowel. And this trowel you see has a notch on it. It has a serrated se uh, section. It has um, uh, cutting edges for cutting rope. It also comes with a length of paracord and it has measurements for depth of measuring, uh, of digging. So that's handy dandy. It's a little more fancy. It's a little more expensive. Um, if you don't want to spend the money, just this regular little camping trowel will do the trick. Now for women, if you don't want to carry around a ton of toilet paper and use toilet paper every single time, this is the bomb. It is antimicrobial. It's a little pee pad. I don't remember what they call it, but it's a she pee <laughs> kind of thing. And it um, is antimicrobial, as I said, so you just touch yourself, wipe off, dry off and then you snap it up so it keeps the dirty side in. It's got a little loop so you can hang it on the outside of your pack if you're a backpacker, or you can hang it up to dry when you wash it because you're gonna wash it every once in a while when you do your washing. But I found this, um, a Kula cloth. There you go, K-U-L-A, Kula cloth. And uh, it's perfect for just catching those few little drips when you go number one. All right, what else do you want when you're camping? You want some kind of something, be it a length of paracord or one of these fancy things that has, well, let me open it and show it to you. So this is really cool. It comes with a hook on one end and you notice it's got these little bits in it. So when you hang it up, you can use these instead of clothes pins. You can put your clothes ends through here to hang stuff up. So that's really handy. There's a hook at the other end. That's one way that you can do it. Another way is just to get a length of paracord. This is 25 feet. No, that is not overkill because remember, it's not the distance between the trees that you need. 
You also need to go around the trees at both ends to hang up a clothesline. So 25 feet is not overkill, trust me. This is just a brand new one I just got. Um, and I like that it has um, a cord winder, a cord keeper to keep it tidy. I'm a tidy person. Another thing you're gonna want is clips, different kinds of clips. This one is magnetic, which is handy. And clothes pins, lots of different kinds of clips that I keep with me. And that's good not only for clipping things to a clothesline, like when you're washing off your clothes or drying things out after a rain. It's also good to clip like a light up inside your tent or inside your tent if you want to just air out your socks overnight, you can clip them up inside your tent. So it's good to have clips for all kinds of things. Speaking of a light, you should always, always, always have some kind of headlamp with you. Now this um, Molier was a gift from a friend and it is an awesome one because it not only has the strip of light, it also has a spotlight and it's got a nifty feature that you can turn it on and off by swiping your hand next to your head. It, it's just an awesome and it's USB rechargeable so you don't have to carry any batteries with you. So that's real handy always bring some kind of headlamp and like I say the Molier is the one that I like. Then another kind of light is the flex tail. The flex tail gets really really bright. You can also get a little lampshade that fits over it. It comes in white or orange and it has a handy dandy little hook that you can either carry or hang in your tent with or without the light shade without the lampshade. But what I highly recommend the flex tail for it, even if you don't need it as a lamp, it's an inflator and deflator. And it comes with a ton of different tips on it. This is the tip that I need for my sleep system. It comes with um, the pointy little one. It comes with the bigger one. Anyway, it comes with several different types of tips on it. So that's real handy dandy. Getting to sleep system, I'm not gonna talk about any particular sleep system. I am gonna mention that my uh, Climate Insulated V Ultralight SL, I absolutely love this sucker. Absolutely love it. I have not folded it properly because I would just threw it in here real quick, but this one, the Insulated V Ultralight SL really does work well as a sleeping pad. I not only used it to camp, but I also had a glamp at my mom's. She had a studio apartment and I was glamping in the back of the apartment for a while and this worked great on her hardwood floor <laughs> under my sleep system. So anyway, just saying. Um, you're also going to want to invest in a good pillow. I've been really happy with um, the Eros pillow from Sea to Summit. It's teeny tiny. You can blow it up very easily with just a couple breaths. Something that it took me a while to really wrap my brain around was not to over inflate it. It works better um, if you like a soft pillow to under inflate it. And it deflates super easy. So here it is sealed up and flat. It's got baffles in it, so it's not just a balloon. This is all I need, two puffs, and I've got a wonderful fluffy pillow. You can blow it up more if you like a firm pillow. Um, you can blow it up exactly the way you want it. There's a little vent here that you can just let out a little air at a time. And when you're done for the day, well, for the night, and you're getting up and packing up, you just pull the plug and it deflates that quick and it packs up super small. Um, I also like the velvety softness of the cover on this Eros pillow from Sea to Summit. So I recommend this pillow. I've been really happy with it. All right, we're getting down to the end. Um, I would recommend that you have some kind of flashlight and emergency radio with you. Um, this one is an emergency radio, but it's also batteryless. It's got solar panel, it's got a bar light, as well as the regular flashlight, and you can charge it up just by cranking it. 
so you don't need to carry batteries. If the sun isn't bright, you don't have to worry about charging it. Um, carry some kind of emergency radio with you. So my camera is overheating, so I gotta hurry up and wrap this up. Um, always, always, always one thing you want with you camping is you want some kind of tarp. Um, I like this, this is a six by 10 and it fits over my bike or I can make a quick shelter with it, but usually I just use it as a cover for my bike. You want flip flops or some kind of sandals to wear in camp. And of course, don't forget your soap. I carry a bar of soap because it's hair and body soap, um, shampoo and regular bar soap. Um, and it mm, smells nice, lemon verbena. Um, all right, so my camera crapped out in 100 plus degree temperatures. It overheated, so I had to come inside and I'm finishing up inside. So left off telling you about emergency radios. It's important to have some kind of emergency radio with you. I prefer to have one with the crank dynamo so that I'm not worried about running out of batteries or having to carry batteries or having to worry about keeping it charged as a USB rechargeable. Like I said, the one I've got, you can charge it um, through a USB and keep it charged, but then if it runs out of juice, you can just crank the dynamo. And if you are really into cranking that dynamo a lot, you can get a little bit of charge for your cell phone out of it too. So it's a handy emergency radio to have. Then two more things I wanted to talk about. One, you need you a multi-tool, some kind of multi-tool. Um, you need a knife, a screwdriver, and pliers if nothing else. A bottle opener for your beer is handy, but I've got my Leatherman, my handy dandy Leatherman. I would strongly recommend getting some kind of multi-tool with a small blade. What are you gonna cut your meat with? What are you gonna cut the twine with? Anyway, so it's really a good idea to have a knife, pliers, all the kinds of things that you'll find in a multi-tool. So be careful picking a multi-tool. Make sure it does have a screwdriver. If it has the teeny tiny little pieces that you have to take out of the case and put in between the pliers, and that's a pain in the ass to use. I got one that has a real screwdriver piece on it that's easier to use as opposed to the piece you take out and connect to it. It's actually an integrated part of, um, of the pliers. Let's see where ours my screwdriver, my screwdriver is on which side? Anyway, my screwdriver's in here somewhere. <laughs> it's a real screwdriver. So that's my Leatherman. And then I'm not gonna get into sleep systems. Like I said before, I'm not gonna get into telling you if you should have a sleep blanket or a sleeping bag. I travel with a sleeping bag that's rated down to 20 degrees. That works perfectly for me, that's plenty depending on your camping style, you might need something different. Depending on your budget, a sleep blanket might be in your budget. A sleep blanket was, the sleeping quilt was outside my budget, but the sleeping bag packs down small enough. Everything that I've shown you except for my tent, everything, including the chair, fits into my 44 liter side case on the Tiger. The larger of the two side cases, my sleeping bag and everything that I showed you fits in there um, with some room to spare even. So um, if you were wondering how much space all that takes. And then the tent. I do not have a tent with a big vestibule for the bike. I would recommend getting one of those if you camp a lot. Get the kind that packs down for moto camping that has a vestibule for your motorcycle. That is just amazing. And when I start traveling full time again, I'll get one of those. But for now, what I got at REI was a Half Dome SL2 Plus. And I found that the Half Dome SL2 Plus worked really well. What features I liked on it were that it had two vestibules. So I could put my camp chair and my boots out one side and I could get in and out on the other side. So it, the two vestibules, I really like that feature on the REI Half Dome tent. So that's it. I can't think of anything else except 
what do you take on your trips? If I've left something out that you think is really essential, please put it down in the comments. I hope you'll include uh, your comments about what you thought was helpful in this, what you think was superfluous. If you have something, like I said, that you think is essential that I've left off my list, please put it down in the comments and share and let me know. It might be something that I'd be happy to include in future camping um, supplies. So um, I'm not going into food or anything. That's another video. Anyway, thank you for watching to the end. That really means a lot to this channel that you watch to the end. And like, subscribe, hit the little bell after you subscribe. And uh, I hope all of this has helped you um, get a little more comfortable and a little more confident to get out there and do some moto camping on your own. So get out there and have an adventure.